Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Um, I'm going to do a little revision here. I've uh, built a power drawbar uh, a few months back after taking uh, delivery of my PM uh, 935 TV. I watched Colin's uh, video over on uh, Comp Edge X uh, uh, YouTube channel and I'm very impressed with his uh, design. It's much more compact, small. It uses the uh, on the air cylinder, it actually uses um, the port, the lower port, to pull the top plate down rather than the top port to push it down. So uh, I'm uh, going to uh, somewhat copy his design. So I uh, went through and drew up my uh, my sketches. I don't have uh, access to a CAD program. So these are very uh, rudimentary drawings. There's a lot of numbers going on in there, but they're uh, accurate by any means. But they just uh, don't look as nice as uh, Collins or uh, Tom Griffin's over on Tom's Techniques. But uh, we're, uh, we're working on maybe getting set up with CAD here in the next little while. So something to shoot for. But anyway, right now, um, like I said, I'm going to be doing a uh, new design here from what I previously had where the air cylinder is on top pushing down on the on the pneumatic gun this one's going to pull down uh, again I really like Collins design so uh, you know they say uh, in, uh, flattery is the, this is the most serious form of flattery is imitation so I uh, appreciate the, the idea there Colin and uh, I'll bring you back in on a couple of processes here okay so I've got everything uh, marked out from my, from my uh, um, high tech drawing here my, my, my uh, mechanical drawing. So now I'm about going to come in here and I'm just going to center drill each of my uh, locations, make sure everything corresponds to my print, and then I'll come back in and drill them aside. So let me go ahead and switch out, remove my, uh, remove my wiggler and my uh, 3 8 collet, put my uh, Drill chuck in. I'm going to center drill. So I'll go through the center drill these and then drill these to size. Okay, so here's the uh, square chunk I had. Uh, surface on this side, you got the di I turned the diameter 6.8 inches. I faced off this side, now I'm going to flip it around, face off this side, and just put a slight counter bore here in the center where the uh, uh, shaft, this is the actual shaft of the pneumatic gun. The threes butterfly will actually recess up in there about fifty thousandths. So I'm uh, to step this out on my three jaw here. What I'm actually doing is just going to place a couple parallels, and I'm going to sit the uh, work right in against those two parallels. Make sure it doesn't rock. Sit it in there nice and firmly. Tighten down on the three jaw evenly. Remember to pull your parallels out. Those will uh, go flying across the shop if not. Now just one extra little thing I'm going to do is just come down in here and set my, my Noga down here and just make sure I'm sitting Make sure I'm sitting down in there right. So I'm not too deep, not too shallow. Uh, there's about a, you know, a thousandth and a half variation. So that will, uh, that will clean up nicely. So now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and come in here with my uh, um, right hand cutting tool. And I've got a little bit of a radius on it. I've stoned, I've stoned the edge here a little bit. I'll just come in and feed across there. Okay, I'm just, uh, I'm probably about the last two inch diameter here. Uh, I've got, I've turned my uh, tensiometer up. I'm all the way up, maxed up to 75 hertz here on my lathe uh, through the VFD. So I'm just, uh, just now going over the uh, bolt holes. You can see the smaller chips coming off and it's breaking those uh, the strands coming off and then 
then I'll do, what I'll do is I'll take an end mill and put it in the chuck while it's, uh, in the tailstock chuck while it's already chucked up in the lathe, the spindle, and just counter bore that uh, end piece in the center there for the shaft of the butterfly. Oh, beautiful finish. Beautiful finish. Now I can just go ahead and lap over that after, and uh, this will be the side that the uh, pneumatic butterfly screws up against. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get this uh, chamfered here on the edge. Go ahead and move my soft stop out of the way here so I don't crash and crush that uh, dial indicator. Make sure I got plenty of clearance around my uh, jaws. Just put a slight chamfer on the edge. And there we go. You're ready to pull out of the chuck and move on to the next process. Okay, you can see what a beautiful finish that turned out. Uh, I got a nice chamfer on each, on each side. I uh, went ahead and took a quarter inch end mill in the drill chuck and the tail stock and uh, went in and countersunk that uh, for the end of the, uh, the center of the pneumatic butterfly impact gun. So all I need to do is I'll put a little bluing on this after, but upon final, before final assembly, I'll put a little bluing on there and just go ahead and lap that. But um, there's uh, the finished, finished top piece, other than I have to obviously drill my uh, holes for my bushings and everything for the, uh, uh, for the bronze bushings for the guide shaft, the guide rods. Okay, I've got my bottom, my base done. I've got my two uprights machined down. They're 5 eighths of inch diameter. I've got them center drilled and uh, countersunk. So I put flathead socket head screws in. I've got the hole right here for the uh, air cylinder. It's threaded to a 3 8 24 thread. Now I need to find, I've got the dimensions off my schematic from dead center of this hole, um, Y and X over for each one of these. So now I just need to set the top plate up, come off a of center, drill the hole for the air cylinder for the other end, uh, for the exhaust on the air cylinder. And then also for these two bushings, or excuse me, for these two uh, support rod, vertical rods, so then I can go ahead and machine some um, bronze bushings for them. So again, I have my center dimension. Once I find the center of my part that's in the vise, I'll come down 265 thousandths and over. 2 inch 450 thousandths to the center and then reverse that for this one. So the, the dilemma now is I need to get these two um, center, center marks in uh, parallel with the table so that I can find my center, come down and over for each one of those. The way I'm going to do that is I've got my uh, gauge pin set and I've chosen a couple of the sizes that uh, will work for the diameter of, this, of my uh, countersunk holes here from, that will go down into the body of the pneumatic gun. So I've got these two dowels in here, I've got a parallel set against it, and then on the quill I have my cool little Noga um, indicator here set up. So I will... Uh, Go ahead and tighten it up, tighten up on the film on this, and I'll traverse across here, and I'll sh show you that I have zero, um, less than a thousandth across here, so I know that it is perfectly parallel with the table. Once I come off and touch off the back side edge, the front edge, fine center, off the right side, off the left side, fine center, I should be able to come down and over my two dimensions for those vertical um, rods to go through. So I'll set the camera up here on a tripod and show you how I've got this uh, dialed in. There we go, right on the money. Less than a, I think that's pretty much dead, dead nuts on right there. Yep, 
that's dead on right there. So now I know that uh, that's parallel. I'll come in and find my center here next. Okay, so I got my bushings done. Um, half inch shoulder and then one and a half, so they're overall two inches. Um, I just need to bore them to size yet, but they're, uh, I didn't go with a pressed fit. I went with a clearance fit. I didn't go with an interference. So there's only about a thousandth. These are one inch right in the money, and I bored the holes to one inch, uh, one, one and a half thousand right down there. So that's how those will sit. Um, now I just need to go ahead and bore these out and put these rods, and bolt everything together and do a test fit and figure out how big of a spacer I need down here for the springs. And uh, I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and check up my bushings in there and bore these out to 5 eighths and then I'll, I'll probably fine tune them on the mill when I get everything perpendicular and laid out there, but I always want to get them close. A little trick, you've got a nice finish here, you don't want to mar it up on your jaws. Old deck of playing cards. Uh, some people use brass shim stock, which works good, aluminum pieces. I've found that on a lot of this stuff, just uh, go ahead and wrap a card around it. Now where the gap is, if, if, I, uh, if I end up getting a smaller piece where I'm overlapping, I will cut the playing card down so that where the overlap is, so that it doesn't have to compensate for that, that thickness. Where the overlap is, I'll make sure that that is between a couple of the jaws. Okay, so I've got my uh, boring bar here set up, and this one looks like it's about a two and a half inch reach, so it should be plenty long enough. So I'll uh, come in here and touch off. And let me make sure I got my uh, speed set accurately here. Yeah, I don't want to switch into uh, another belt, so I'll just kick it up a little bit here in high, in my low range. So I'll come in here. coming in with the uh, boring head, or, bo or boring bar here, excuse me. Okay, let's check and see where we're at. Yeah, 560, 560 thousands to go, so uh, Got a ways to go yet here. I'll back it out and take a 50 thousandths cut. A little bit of lube there on it. Just anything to keep the, the chips from swinging around.
Okay, we're making the uh, last uh, pass here. Zoom down in on it. Hopefully, you can see the finish that way. Making the last, last pass here. Taking the last, uh, I'm going to go 17 thousandths here and kind of creep up on, on this. Like I said, I'll probably uh, put it in the mill for the final touch up. Just to make sure everything's perpendicular. Tighten my snap gauge down snug enough. Or I miscalculated, one of the two. I'm not uh, ruling out that I miscalculated. Nope, looks like I got about five thousandths to go yet. So I think I might have been shooting for my uh, uh, for my final rough cut rather than my finishing. Well, I plug the numbers into the calculator, so uh, I'll make the final cut and come back and we'll go test fit. Okay, I've got mocked up here. Everything seems to move nice and smooth. I just have to determine how uh, much of a spacer to put in here. And I know that when this is bolted on the machine, that socket in order to clear the drawbar needs to be about a half an inch, um, roughly about a half an inch above the top of the plate. So about right there. So I'll uh, just kind of hold this there and see where that's about where the spring pressure will hold will hold it, which is uh, less than three thousandths. Let's go two and three quarters. And see where that puts us. Yeah, two and three quarters looks about right. And where, let's see, two and three quarter there. Pulls down and it should rebound it good. Maybe I'll go three inches. Put a little more tension on those springs. The air cylinder is definitely going to have enough to pull, to pull it down and I won't get coil bind. I shouldn't get coil bind there, so. I think I'm going to shoot for, I will split the difference, go two and seven eighths. So two and seven eighths on that. So I get a couple of spacers. I think I'm just going to use some uh, extra bronze material I have here. A couple of two and seven eighths spacers there. I think what I'll end up doing is doing three, test fitting it. That way if I need to trim them down an eighth of an inch, I can always take an eighth of an inch off rather than have to add to it. Then I'll figure out what I need to do for my uh, spacer up here in order to pull it down my one inch stroke. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and make a couple of three inch spacers to fit right up in there out of uh, a piece of bronze right here. So I'll do that and be back. Alright, got my bottom spacers machined. They're all on there, three inches. Uh, I might have to trim them down just a little bit because I am a little high up off of there. But I'll uh, see, I'm still not coil binding, I'm going all the way down. So I may just leave it, but I'll uh, test fit it and everything and try it before I come to any conclusions. And then I'll have to machine um, a spacer here. So all the way down, 
um, looking like inch and three eighths and all the way up I'm about three eighths so if I put a three eighths spacer in there there's my inch stroke but I don't want to bottom out so I'll probably go half maybe a little bit more half maybe five eighths inch spacer in there if I uh, so that way when it's all the way down yeah probably somewhere in a half to five eighths inch spacer when it's all said and done I'll have to see how far down it engages down on the draw bar but boy it sure moves nice and smooth and everything looks good bolt down here I'm gonna machine a I really like the way Colin did his uh, fittings rather than just use a regular over-the-counter button fitting I think I'm gonna machine one and come off here with my uh, tease for the uh, needle uh, with the needle valves, the uh, check valves, and then uh, come down through a spacer here, down through here, and for the exhaust, and then I have to dr uh, drill and tap these for n eighth inch NPT for the T's coming out for the line. So the air pressure will come in here, circle down here to the cylinder.